Kelsey. This is my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I'm wearing one of my fancy booktube hats, and today I am doing the first video for a new recommendations group. This is a group started by Leah Cooper on Goodreads. It's called Monthly Book Rex. It is, I think, sort of meant to fill the hole in our lives that the absence of the monthly recommendations and Top 5 Wednesday groups has left. So if you two are missing having recommendation topics, uh, I would suggest checking out this new group. The first topic for the month of February is wintry reads. I'm doing this on the last day of February, but it is still definitely winter weather, though the days are getting slightly longer, slightly more time to film in the evenings. There is hope that longer days and warmer weather will come on the horizon, but it is still very winter. Now, I have a sort of contentious relationship with seasonal reading. I try to do it every so often because it seems like a good idea for booktube, and then it doesn't usually go very well for me. I don't often end up reading the books I mean to read during the season that I've like set aside. I don't get to them and don't get to them. They sit on my shelf for another year set aside for a certain season. I have joked several times that my idea of seasonal reading is that in spring you read fairy tales, and in summer you read fluffy fairy tales, and in fall you read spooky fairy tales, and in winter you read chilly fairy tales. It's just, just fairy tales all year round. Every single season when I think of it reminds me of fairy tales. The other thing that makes me feel kind of conflicted about seasonal reading is that matching books thematically, style-wise, the way they make me feel to the actual, like, season that's happening outside doesn't often really work for me. As in, like, when winter is deep and rough, I kind of want summery fluff to pull me away from it. And in summer, when the warm days have me feeling confident and secure, that's when, like, I can actually tackle some of the darker things. I think I put myself in, like, a months-long reading slump trying to read spooky books for Halloween this October. Heading into an emotionally challenging November and December, I think that was a mistake for me. So given that I am someone who does try to do seasonal reading but would probably be happier with herself, if I read perhaps counter to the seasons. This is a list of books that make me think of winter and how I feel during winter, but they are not necessarily books that I would exclusively recommend reading during winter or that I would go and reread during winter. I actually considered doing a winter book recommendations list back earlier in the season, like around the holidays, and I found that the way I was thinking about the season and the way I was thinking about the darkness of winter was probably not going to be what anyone wanted in their YouTube subscription feeds during their happy holiday season. So I shelved that video topic and that list of books. A lot of sort of cozy winter reading recommendations that go up around the holidays are centered around like Christmassy warm feels. And honestly, holidays can be hard for a lot of people too, but the reason I think we try to be festive and cheery when the nights grow longer and the days grow colder is that we kind of need to hunker down and cover ourselves with that blanket of coziness to get us through. So anyways, the way I've been thinking about winter reads this year has been more in line with the melancholy of the season and the bittersweetness of the joys that we make for ourselves in spite of it. These are also all fantasy, by the way, so I think I'm actually going to title this video, like, Winter Fantasy Reads. These are kind of ordered in a stack in my lap from most obvious to least obvious. Um, the first book is the most obvious because it is a wintry fairy tale and it has winter in the title. It is Winter Rose by Patricia A. McKillop. This is a loose Tam Lin retelling, which is generally like an autumnal fairy tale, except this is a wintry version. It takes place over the course of an emotionally hard winter for the protagonist's family. But spring does come in the end. McKillop's writing is beautiful and dreamlike. The magic in this book is surreal and otherworldly. I do feel like McKillop has written books for all seasons. For example, I would feel like The Bell at Seely Head is definitely a more summery read, but this one is definitely more wintry. My next entry in this list 
is a duology. And these books are on the more obvious side because they take place in a very cold weather setting. There are some more popular, more heavily hyped, Russian-inspired fantasy books that show up on a lot of people's winter reading lists, like The Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden or Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I like both of those, but I wanted to highlight something that is a little more under-hyped in this video, so I want to mention The Waning Moon duology by Leana Likitalo. The first book is The Five Daughters of the Moon. The second book is the Sisters of the Crescent Empress. This is not a strictly historical story, it is a fictional fantasy setting, um, but this is inspired by the fall of the Romanovs. And it's a very melancholy, sometimes a little bit eerie, um, sometimes a little bit claustrophobic feeling story about five very different daughters of an empress um, who lose everything. There is some dark, heavy politics in here, some beautiful, mysterious magic, and these books, especially the second one, definitely strike like a certain very bittersweet emotional feeling that I identify with the melancholy of winter. Next, we're getting into slightly less obvious books, things that don't explicitly have like a cold, wintry, snowy setting or anything, um, but that I still feel very much encapsulate the spirit of like hunkering down for a long winter. If you want to hunker down for a long book, try Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. This is a long, slow, alternate history fantasy novel that I find really, really rewarding. This has a very 19th century writing style, it has a good deal of, like, dry wit, and in the final portions of the book it does build up to something that's really quite epic and fantastical. It is a fey fantasy, it is a book where magic is perilous but alluring, and I would say it's a modern classic of fantasy literature. Now the next book on this list is one I actually recently just finished, and so I stuck it in here fairly impulsively. This is a short story collection. This is A Cathedral of Myth and Bone by Cat Howard. And if you're looking for fantasy stories that are kind of dark and beautiful, I would recommend this book. Dark and beautiful is sort of my idea of a winter aesthetic, if you haven't already figured that out. A lot of these are contemporary fantasy stories, but not all of them. A lot of them are really quite short, sort of painting this vivid picture before it dissolves away. There are some thematic through lines in this book that are hinted at by the title. There is a sort of obsession with the mythos of sainthood that keeps showing up. Cathedrals as locations do appear a lot, and along with that the idea of sort of relics and the body as magic as the source of miracles. There are some other running themes here that aren't as explicitly indicated by the title. These are, I think, all stories about women and women's power. Also, a very large number of these are about art of some sort or another, either about art or artists, or inspired by stories from various artistic mediums. I came very close to giving this a five-star rating, and I think the reason that I held back and only gave it four was because there is not quite as much joy and happiness in it as I think I would find in a story collection that was a five-star read for me, but that actually makes it very fitting, I think, for this winter theme. And then the last one here is the one that might be a bit of a shocker because it is the very counterintuitive pick in terms of, like, setting. This is a book that takes place in a very warm weather setting, so you would think that one would identify this book with summer, but no, for me the themes of this book make it a winter book, and that is Circe by Madeline Miller, which is again a book that deals with a very long span of time and a very character-centric story of personal growth over a very long span of time. This is centuries because the main character is an immortal goddess. And again, it's a book that deals with bittersweet themes about loss, about change, and those are all things that say winter to me. So anyhow, that's the end of my list of wintry fantasy reads. Let me know if you have read any of these books and what you think of them. Let me know if they are the sort of books that you identify with winter or not. 
Anyhow, I hope you're having a nice day. That is all. Bye for now.